Well, hello friends, welcome out of Spec Guide. I'm Max. Today I am pulled up to a Rivian Waypoint charger in my Polestar 2 in a Colorado State Park. These are free level two destination chargers, but that's nothing new. They've been around for a bit. That's not what this video is about. This video is about companies needing to understand, specifically car companies, software and charging, because these two things are more interlinked than you think, and they have a lot to do with the electric car ownership experience. And this is something Tesla figured out early, and it's raining, so let me get under this canopy. But it's something that companies like Rivian are figuring out right now. There's some really cool news coming out. Uh, so I wanted to talk about both the Rivian news, but also some buyer's advice right now and here and now, the best brands to buy for electric cars in terms of the software job they do. Because at this point where we are in 2023, I think you need to factor in software, built-in navigation, route planning, all of these features into your purchase decision if you're buying an electric car, especially if you're not the nerdy type and you want a low fuss experience. So I'm gonna discuss the cars that do it best and some of the cars that do it worst that you should avoid. So let's get into it. I love these waypoint chargers, by the way. They're 11 kilowatts, they're free. They've deliberately put them in kind of out of the way places, state parks like this, super cool. I'm um, getting a you know free charge of my Polestar. But the point being, what's the news today? Rivian announced, or actually didn't announce, there's a rumor, uh, it's an exclusive story that leaked through Electric that uh, Rivian is planning to acquire a better route planner. And if you're not familiar, a better route planner is like the, I think, leading trip planning app EV drivers use. It's a smartphone app. It's also a website and um, it is uh, available on Android Automotive and cars like my Polestar 2. So in some cars, you can actually download it uh, with cars that have the Android operating system. So this all ties into software and it's super relevant. And let's just get this off the bat. I'm super excited to hear news like this. We don't know, nothing's confirmed as of me filming this video, but according to that electric story, it looks likely that Rivian's going to acquire a better route planner, which means they have big plans for actually integrating better trip planning to their vehicles. Now, Rivian already has route planning in their software. I can't tell you firsthand how great it is. I know Kyle uses it a lot all the time in his R1T right now. He's towing his uh, Coda electric car that he bought from California back to Colorado. Um, so he's experiencing it currently. Uh, my understanding is this is decent, but, um, you know, Rivian's built that software with the assumption of their Rivian not just waypoint chargers, but their adventure network, which are DC fast chargers that they're building. They plan to build 3,500 of them across 600 sites by the end of this year. Will that happen? I don't know. There's actually not that many of them so far, but this makes it clear to me that Rivian is ambitious and wants to control the ownership experience and make it better for owners the way Tesla does right now. Uh, and it is important because the ownership experience in the electric vehicles is tied into the charging. Most of them have a decent uh, charging you know, apparatus. Uh, nowadays, most electric cars are, have thermally managed batteries. They can DC fast charge very well for road trips. The issue is the software, because when you plan a route in a Tesla, it's actually great. And right off the bat, I'll just say Tesla's lineup is great because they have the superchargers, but they also have great route planning built into the vehicle. So you don't have to fuddle around with other mapping apps on your phone uh, or apps like a better route planner. In my Polestar 2, I've used a better route planner. However, I will say Polestar and Volvo, because they use Android Automotive, have a pretty decent um, implementation of Google Maps and its version of route planning. So with Google Maps route planning, you get uh, automated basically kind of stops added on the way. If you punch in a destination, it'll add multiple charging stops. That's great. By the way, I'm going to get in my car. There's like a ton of bugs here. So I'm going to finish this in my car. All right, sorry about that. We're finishing this video in my car. It's, uh, you know, bugs and rain. This is not the most pleasant state park at the moment, but hey, I'm not gonna complain about the free charge. Back to my point about software though. Tesla has amazing, amazing built-in route planning and software. No, you know, none of those third-party apps required. My Polestar and other Volvos use the Android Automotive operating system, so they have Google Maps built in. And you can see here, Google Maps, right? When I go to destinations uh, and with this uh, software, it will add the charging stop. It'll tell me the percentage of battery estimated when I reach that charging stop. And very importantly, it will do what's called preconditioning the battery, which means basically if it's really hot, you know, cooling it down, but mainly when winter, heating the battery up so they can accept a fast charge, get you back on the road quicker. If you're in a road trip, you're making multiple stops. So this kind of software being built in the cars is super important. And while Volvo's and Polestar system isn't as good, um, as Tesla. It's not their system, it's really Google's. Um, 
the Google system is decent, it suffers from not having the hardware in place. So what Rivian's doing is a really comprehensive approach. They're building the hardware, they're building the software. So as of right now, I can tell you the Rivian Adventure Network is promising. It's not built out. Rivian software is promising. They're updating it all the time. They're improving it. It's super nice to see. It's not finished. Uh, and there's a better route planner acquisition is, you know, just the start of things. They're going to have to work to integrate the app. Hopefully they keep a better route planner around as a service for other electric vehicle owners because, I, you know, it's a really useful tool. A lot of people come to depend on it. And yeah, on to other brands, though, that do software well. On Lucid has okay route planning um, that they're working on. Uh, they're decent. So is Ford because Ford Sync uh, actually will add stops. I think it'll precondition now. The Mercedes system uh, is really sophisticated. Let's give you a lot of customization. Pretty good maps built into it for those luxury vehicles. However, mainly... There's a lot of car makers right now who don't have great software for route planning and adding charging stops. Namely, I'm thinking of the Koreans, Hyundai, Kia, Genesis. Uh, their vehicles are great. I can't say enough good things about the you know modern vehicles they built, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kia EV6, the Genesis GV60. These are really cool electric vehicles. They charge really well. Um, they have you know really great rides, nice interiors, cool tech features, but their actual software experience, especially for mapping and navigation, is just confusing and bad. I've used it and it's befuddled me. Uh, and I think they have a preconditioning mode, but it's not great. It's really just, frankly, not user-friendly. And I don't even know if it shows real-time charger status. Theoretically, I think it should, because that's another thing great car software should have, right? Real-time charger status, whether it's a Tesla supercharger or Rivian, um, uh, what do they call it? The Rivian Adventure Network, once that's online and working for other cars, they're hoping to open it up for more than just Rivians, whether it's Electrify America, whomever it may be, I want real-time status of whether or not that station's online or offline, whether it's even compatible with my car. One niggle I'll say with the Android you know, the Google map system in my Polestar is while it t generally works well, it sometimes tried to route me to a Rivian uh, adventure network charger, which is great, but I can't use those yet. So the software doesn't even know it, kind of a bug. I've also seen it uh, in a Volvo um, C40 vehicle I was testing. It routed me uh, to a Tesla supercharger, which would also, those are not open yet in the US to non-Tesla vehicles with a CCS port. So lots of bugs to sort out. Even the Google Maps system isn't perfect. Really, it's just Tesla right now who is the best system, but I have high hopes for Rivian given this news. I really do like what Volvo and Polestar are doing. And by extension, I'll say GM because uh, General Motors is also using an Android automotive based system, which leads me to believe they're gonna be integrating Google Maps quite heavily. I believe they already do in the GM see Hummer EV and their upcoming vehicle should too. Right now the Chevy Bolt built in, you know, uh, software isn't amazing, but they clearly are planning to move past that. We have yet to see exactly what their Android automotive solution looks like, what the software will be like. Uh, I haven't spent time with the Cadillac Larica to know. There's a bunch of upcoming vehicles like the Chevy Blazer EV and Equinox. We'll have to see. But based off my experience with Volvo and Polestar, I can tell you to expect pretty decent things given it's based off Google Maps. Google Maps has not only great mapping and you know planning, the charging stops are okay as long as they're not bugged and routing you to Tesla superchargers or Rivian uh, Adventure Network places. Um, so that's decent. Uh, short of that, really, it takes a lot to build good software, and that's why Rivian has to embark on this effort. Lucid uh, is improving, but I don't think they're as good as Rivian even right now, and that's why I think they made the concession of allowing you to use Apple CarPlay, which is great. I think more options are great. I wish Tesla and Rivian would let you use Apple CarPlay, but they don't. And the reason those brands don't is because both of those brands heavily believe in controlling the software and the user experience. Um, sometimes I'd argue against the interest of the customer, but hey, they see it as making things simpler. It forces them to really have a good built-in solution, which, you know, I'm in support of generally. I do think they should add a CarPlay. I don't see Tesla adding it. I could see Rivian adding it. I would say, why not Rivian? Please just give it to people. Uh, but in the meantime, they get to improve their own software too. Uh, and they are working on it. This A Better Route Planner Acquisition news is super interesting. Uh, what other EVs are there? Or Volkswagen. I uh, do want to mention them before I close this video off. It's complicated. If you've been following any kind of EV business news, you'll see that a lot of Volkswagen is in chaos right now with their EV division, specifically around software. It's delaying launches of their products. It's caused them lots of 
angst uh, and Consternation, uh, consternation. So I can't spell words today, but it's you know causing a lot of consternation internally, executive shakeups, uh, because they're trying to form themselves in a software company and they're just not doing an amazing job. Uh, I know Kyle tends to like the software in ID4 when it works, though he even he's admitted it's buggy. I don't. I don't find it intuitive. Same thing in the Porsche Taycan and the other Volkswagen Group products. This would apply to Audi e-tron too. Uh, they just don't seem to have a handle on software yet. I mean, maybe you can say functionally, oh, it preconditions the battery, it meets the spec, you know, classic German engineer things. But in terms of like me being a normal non-nerd, uh, you know, non-car person, I don't know how to use that software. It's just, it's, it's bad. Like it's not particularly responsive. Uh, it seems like with the ID7 and some of the newer vehicles are launching and I assume refreshes of the Volkswagen ID4 crossover, we're gonna see improvements on this, but right now it's pretty bad. I think some of it's baked into the hardware and the processor they have, but a lot of it's just their software with CarAid, um, which is their internal group uh, for building car software. Um, so I'm hoping for their sake, they can figure things out. Uh, and improve. But right now, that's one of the reasons I wouldn't recommend buying a Volkswagen EV or really car in general. Their software is lacking. Sorry, I just got a notification. Um, anyhow, so I'm really tired. I got to close this video off. It's not raining, at least, thankfully. I'm going to continue getting my charge, but I thought this video was important to make because I cannot stress enough how important EV software is, how important we need to, um, you know, keep it. Uh, it needs to be at the top of the priority list for every car manufacturer. Rivian gets it and they're working on it. So I don't think I need to send them that message that I just thought it was topical to be at a waypoint today uh, at one of their chargers. But so many car makers don't seem to get it. Volkswagen needs to figure things out quickly. The Koreans, especially with their compelling vehicles, need to get things in order. Toyota software, I know they've improved it a lot from where it used to be in terms of the general you know, multimedia interface and UI, but charging, route planning, come on. That needs to improve, especially if they're gonna, in the next few years, actually release uh, competitive electric vehicle offerings. Uh, you can't have a compelling electric vehicle that grandma or grandpa or your uncle or your parents or whomever is gonna wanna drive if it has lacking software. This needs to get better. I hope we can see uh, more improvements to come. If you have specific vehicle experiences you think I haven't touched on in this video, I've just covered, in my opinion, the biggest and most relevant brands, please do bring them up because I know there's more to discuss. Um, you know, I'm lumping GM, Volvo, Polestar, a lot of those under Android Automotive because they're all using the Google software, which fair enough, they've decided they can't build entirely good software on their own, sort of depending on someone else's platform. I don't fault them for that. At least they have the humility to admit it. But the strategy that Tesla has taken, we've seen, has been successful, and hopefully Rivian can somewhat follow in their footsteps, and I hope to see more like that. I've been Mac without a spec guy. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.